What was the technique used in this attack? It appears that the technique, Corey, was that uh, the attackers changed the DNS, the domain name system, for the internet for these affected sites. And that's basically the URL. So when you type in www.nytimes.com, they redirected it everywhere or just, I mean, how, explain a little bit how DNS works. Yeah, so DNS works similar to the, I guess, to the, to the phone book, if people remember what that is. Uh, it takes a name. The phone books, just to be clear, were these books. Here's these books. Were pages. That's right. It's a long story. <laughs> uh. So it, as the phone book, it helps you map from somebody's name to how you would actually reach them. And similarly online, if you type in Bloomberg.com or NewYorkTimes.com or what have you, DNS is the system of, uh, of server that map that to a physical uh, computer bank, to a set But of before ideas. you get to the, the actual raw registry of names, there's some companies that sort of sell these registries and claim to manage them. I say claim because this one wasn't happening so much. Is it, is it significant that it was in Melbourne? Um, no, I don't think it's significant in Melbourne. It's a you know, very well-regarded, very large uh, company that, that provides domain name service registration for a number of companies. Why does it take so long to fix something like this? Well, because uh, anybody who accesses one of these URLs needs to make a DNS query to find out the uh, destination IP address. Any user. Any user who does that, right. um, there's a system of what's known as caching, essentially storing local copies so that not every request has to go all the way to the mothership to find out the destination. Those caches, which are designed to speed up the queries, uh, take a long time to, uh, to turn over. And these are the things that there used to be a company called Ink to Me and Ariba. These, 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 these are these companies do sort of dis distribute this stuff across the web. It's a form of, of distributing it and of storing a local copy so you don't have to go back to your, your source of truth every time. Those can take you know, hours, even days sometimes to clear out and that's the trade-off between um, being able to respond quickly versus being able to get the performance benefits. Is it clear what this group wanted? It's not clear. I mean, uh, from my personal knowledge, I don't know that it, uh, who was responsible. We have seen uh, the Syrian Electronic Army or others purporting to be them uh, defaming and, and harassing a lot of companies, particularly when stories uh, have been found to be negative to Syrian regime of uh, Bashar al-Assad. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's just, a, I, I, you know, I was talking to Michael Riley about this. I mean, the notion that business, and particularly American businesses, are now targets in a, in a, in a raging war that right. the U.S. is not yet in involved in, but sabers are rattling, yep. um, uh, is a new era here. Um, absolutely. I mean, bad guys go to where the opportunity lies. They'll, you, know, you don't have to run faster than your, the bear. You have to run faster than everyone else the bear is, is chasing. Um, and so in this case, a soft target like a commercial entity is frequently easier for the bad guys to go after as opposed to actual military infrastructure. Uh, I want to change gears a little bit because I've, I've been thinking about, we've been reporting a lot about wearable stuff. Mm. And as it relates to hacking, I wonder what the, as we enter in a new, you know, I don't know that anyone's going to want to hack into my Fitbit or my up band or whatever, but right. I wonder with Google Glass or with an Apple wearable device, if, if there are new types of hack, are, are hackers salivating for these things to hit the market? <laughs> um, absolutely. I mean, if one thing is true, it's that people will always find a way to abuse any new piece of technology. You know, systems are so complicated and so powerful, uh, they, be, they prove irresistible to the attackers. But in much the same way as this New York Times incident, what it means is that on the defense side, we really need to look at a continuum of risk. The way that the bad guys got into Melbourne IT was that they were able to, um, to sniff the username and password or somehow breach the username and password. And you've covered, we've talked about many times that that's insufficient security. So what that means is that companies need to take really a, a risk-based approach to evaluating, you know, who is accessing this device, this computer, this system? Is it the appropriate person? And is what that person's trying to do appropriate in this context? Interesting. I, I also wonder if, if if the apps themselves, because this wasn't the New York Times getting hacked, right? It was, it was the, the DNS server, That's right. one of them getting hacked. Somebody they and so I wonder if, if these devices, if they open them up for apps, open themselves up for more risk. Absolutely. I mean, with something like Google Glass, uh, which admittedly is, is very early stage, you have a powerful camera, you have a video camera that's transmitting. It also knows your location. It even knows the orientation of your head. And so if bad guys were able to gain control of that, they could both monitor the wearer as well as potentially monitor anyone the wearer is, is looking at. You know, if I was wearing it right now, it could be watching you and neither of us might know.